Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Yes, late yesterday it was announced publicly that Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the billionaire, is willing to buy Manchester United from the Glazer family. Now, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's name has started to be mentioned ever since he publicly bid for Chelsea. He was asked in an interview, why not bid for Manchester United? Because Sir Jim is a Manchester United fan. He said, Manchester United isn't for sale. I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe came out and bid for Chelsea on purpose. I don't think he ever had any intention of buying Chelsea, but he wanted to put it out there that he would be a good owner. Listen to what he said about Chelsea. We don't intend to take one penny out of Chelsea. We want to invest. We make money from other means. We don't need to make profits from a football club. He was putting it out there to the Glazers and the Manchester United fandom, you and me, that this, a respectable billionaire, who I don't even know what industry he's in, gases, whatever, right? He also invests in Mercedes McLaren of F1, and he's done a very, very good job with them. So, of course, like you, I was very, very excited. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. For someone to buy a football club, the owners of said football club must want to sell. So what's going on? Some media sources are saying that they're trying, the Glazers are trying to sell bits and pieces of the club to kind of other people. So in other words, so they can still have control and rip out millions from the dividends every year. We don't want this. So how do we stop them selling off bits and pieces of the club? Because we want them to sell to one entity. And we must be careful which entity this is. We don't want to be going, yeah, yeah, anyone will do here. Because we'll end up in a similar mess that we're in already. We don't, you know, we don't want it to go over the Atlantic again. So Jim Ratcliffe is the only person we should be championing to buy this club. So what do we do to fight? Basically, your voices and my voices on videos like this are very important. Comment on this video. Hashtag Glazers Out. Tell me your opinions. It may be a little channel. This video won't get many views because basically I'm a movies and TV channel. I mainly talk about DC Comics live action, but I'm a Manchester United fan. And now and again, I will always make Manchester United videos. So if you're a United fan, you might as well subscribe because basically I do talk about Manchester United now and again. And if you like films and TV, hey, you get a bonus and it's all free and you get to see this beautiful, ugly mug whenever you want. But anyway, going back to the subject at hand, how do we do to fight this, to stop them selling off portions of the club? Very serious. Now, I assume eventually Sir Jim Ratcliffe could just pick up these bits and pieces, right? Because if you invest the funds by bits and pieces of the club, maybe Sir Jim Ratcliffe could go, right, I'll buy those bits and pieces off of you. It could become very ugly and that's not what we want. What we want is to create a situation where they have to sell to Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Now, some people say they just want to sell a stake of the club, and some people are saying they want to sell the club outright. It's a bit like the transfer bullshit we get all the time. For example, since the Jim Ratcliffe news, and by the way, these aren't whispers, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's advisors and publicists have come out saying that Sir Jim wants to buy Manchester United if the Glazers are willing to sell. Sir so Jim Ratcliffe wants Manchester United 100%. He may be willing to buy a little stake for now, and then may, hopefully, not maybe, definitely in two years, he gets to buy the whole club. For me, I don't look. We know these business things can be very slow. Manchester United can't afford a slow process. The best thing to happen here, right, is for Sir Jim Ratcliffe to be able to buy the entire club as soon as possible. Now, these deals take time. So the Chelsea deal took about six months. I think that's the shortest period we can hope for. That's a great result if it takes six months, whatever. We don't want a long, drawn out, protracted situation where Sir Jim buys a stake and they're still there and then they're having a civil war. 
because that's what's going to happen if they just sell little stakes to different people. If, if, he's, if they sell different little stakes to investor funds, right, basically those investor funds may not even invest in Manchester United. That's the problem. They're going to be as bad as the Glazers, just taking out their dividends. It's a worse situation. We do not want that. So again, what do we do? So not only comment on this video, you go on Twitter. It doesn't matter how many people follow you. Go on Twitter, go on Instagram, go on TikTok. Hashtagging Glazers out and hashtag empty the stadium. Now, I live in Cyprus and I've done a United video before where I said I can't be doing this in Cyprus and dictating what you, you know, you fans who go to the stadiums home and away religiously. And I respect you for that. So I can't dictate to you. What I'm saying to you, I want you to shut your eyes and imagine the dramatic message it sends globally if Manchester United Stadium is empty and hasn't got the most important entity that football clubs need. You the people. That's why they bought the club. Because you make them that those billions every year. It's because of your investment in the club via buying tops and you know, subscribing to Sky or whatever you do that makes Manchester United such a profitable entity. If you unfollow the Manchester United social media account, if you unsubscribe from MUTV, if you don't buy the tops and the shorts, and I haven't done since the day the Glazers come here. I would have loved to have worn a Manchester United top. I don't have one in my possession because my old ones are fucked. So sorry about that, but I don't think I need to wear any merch to prove to you that I love Manchester United, because I do. We make this club worthless to them. That's how we win. So on Monday, if the good people who go to home and away games empty that stadium, it will work. It will send a message. Let me explain to you about something I helped fight with a couple of years ago. There was a director called Zack Snyder. Some of you watching this video will know all about this. Uh, he was booted off a film called Justice League. He had completed his version of the film. They brought another director in. They lied that he left because his daughter tragically killed herself. It was terrible. So his fans and DC fans together created a hashtag, released the Snyder Cut. Snyder started leaking stuff from his film and we fought and we fought. This took two or three years. Sometimes it looked impossible, but via the hashtag, via flying banners over Comic-Con, we won. We got to see a four hour Justice League movie. And that's what we need to do. We need to be resolute, no matter how many players they buy. Because now, right? Because now they're putting through the media that they're going to buy another five world class players. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, we don't care about transfers. I do care about transfers, and if this was genuine, I'd be excited. Because we can get rid of them and let them bring these five players in. We need quality. We can see that already. There's horrible things coming out of the club. You know, players arguing. The Ronaldo situation, look, I'm not happy with Cristiano Ronaldo. I love him. He's a legend. But... I'm not happy with Cristiano at all. He has conducted himself in the wrong way. He desperately wants out of this club, or so it looks like, or is he trying to expose the Glazers because he loves the club? I can't make my mind up. I don't know what's going on, but what's going on with him isn't really good, but maybe he's doing it on purpose because if, uh, if, you know, if Wall Street can see like the most valuable commodity at the club causing problems, that brings the share prices down as well. So Jim Ratcliffe wanting to buy the club, puts them back up. Maybe it's all part of the plan. Now they can sell. That's all we want. So basically, we need to make the club worthless to them. But going back to empty old traffic, some people say, oh, you know, it won't work. Listen, there's no magical thing that's going to send them over the edge. Now, it's very interesting when, uh, when the Super League situation leaked out and the Glazers worried were well, the leaders of that situation. Us, the fans, stood up. And in a very short space of time, the Super League wasn't happening. So that's interesting. But we stopped fighting because we listened to their bullshit. Oh, we want to improve the club. Have they improved the club? Apparently, they've given the front of Old Trafford just a little bit of a, a paint job. They think we're fucking stupid. A few rumours about players, a few promises here and there. 
and they think they can keep us quiet. They did do that after the Super League debacle, but that can't work anymore. I don't believe we will buy any more players now. Fabrizio Romano doesn't agree with me there. He believes we will definitely, definitely buy a central midfield, uh, the defensive midfielder by the end of this window. I hope we do, because people say it's not important, but, you know, the field is the most important thing. We still want the best players. We still want to give Eric the best opportunity to succeed, because right now, I can't see where our win's coming from, and I'm sure you can't either. And if we don't win any games, we're going to be relegated to the championship. Some people wishing for that, you know, especially if the Glazers stay there. But we might get that anyway, because we've got a bunch of players who don't even like the way this manager's playing. Because it's too much like hard work. How did we get this kind of, how this culture of player? Oli. Oli brought this old-fashioned weird mentality. And it's no good. It's the old-fashioned British football mentality. And that may sound good, but it's not. Because football has evolved and football has changed and you need to defend as a team and attack as a team. It's all about the high press. You shouldn't be in this sport if you're not fit enough to do it. Because fitness isn't a magic thing. It's not like you need to be fucking Superman or from Krypton to do high press. No, you just have to cut things out of your diet, give up the drink, give up the smoking. I don't think most of them smoke anyway, but you have to be as fit as you can be. You have to be a specimen. And most of our players are not specimens. Apologies to the Manchester United players who are specimens. There's a couple of them, right? But anyway, we're not going to get anywhere now. So what does the manager do? They're leaking to the press, the players, that they'd rather go back to basics against Liverpool. What does he do here? Because these players, as Ralph proved, and everyone was saying Ralph was a crap manager, no. These players can't play high press because they're not good enough. It's as simple as that. So we've got as many problems on the pitch as we have off of the pitch. And it's all because you and I were let down way before the Glazers came to town. We were let down by a manager who made miracles happen at Manchester United, and I always love him for that. We were let down by Martin Edwards. When he made Manchester United a PLC, he caused this situation. Now, there's rules in place now for new owners of football clubs and businesses that, you know, that it can never happen again. You can't have like ownerships that's ripping dividends out and a kind of kind of ownership model that's at United today. That's brought us to the brink of relegation. And if you think I'm mad, insane, I don't care. We are on the brink of relegation because I can't see what happens. I saw Liverpool on Monday night against Crystal Palace. Now, Palace are better than Manchester United before you think, oh, look at Liverpool, they're not all that. Yes, I know they drew their previous game. They've got a couple of injuries. They started slow last season and they nearly went on the brink on the second half of the season of the fucking quadruple because they've got great owners and a great manager. And that's how a great club is run. I used to think that Manchester United could achieve anything with crap owners and a great manager. That's why I was excited about Eric coming in. But we've seen in the first couple of games that we're struggling. But why was it we played so well in pre-season in the way it seemed Eric wanted us to play and then when it came to match day, it all went wrong? Well, isn't it interesting that Ronaldo had nothing to do with the pre-season games and we played well Mostly. Ronaldo comes back, he's around the team for the first game, comes on as a sub. Not too good. Is Ronaldo's mere presence something that these players can't handle? That's not Ronaldo's fault, but clearly they're intimidated by him. It's kind of a very similar situation to the Roy Keane situation, where Sir Alex Ferguson sold him from Manchester United because he was screaming at players, he was screaming at the youth players and he was intimidating them out of their performances and it was a problem. Now I'm not saying Cristiano and Roy are wrong in those situations but it really doesn't help. Uh, so I don't know if Ronaldo really wants out but I do feel he's a problem in terms of the tactics that Eric wants to implement. He may be able to score another 20-25 goals but he reduces the rest of the team's ability to play the way modern managers want to play. That's why most teams don't want him. He'll score you lots of goals. 
He's a specimen for 37 years old. He's amazing. He's one of the greatest footballers to ever play this game. But at the end of the day, he does reduce, uh, reduce the element of being able to play in a modern style. And so, look, I don't know what I want with Ronaldo. Gone, stay. I'm just lost. He's now come out and said that hundreds of um, the kind of um, media speculation said about him is wrong and only five of the reports are right. And he'll tell us everything in an exclusive interview in two weeks, probably when he's not at the club anymore. I find that very, very cowardly. Very, very cowardly, everyone. Speak now, Ronaldo. You haven't come out once and said you want to stay at this club because you clearly don't. So it looks like he's going to go. I'm not going to be staying up at night. Listen, I'm not player FC. I'm Manchester United FC. So, in closing, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's statement that he wants to buy Manchester United is very important. People like Sir Jim Ratcliffe don't come out randomly and say, hey, I want to buy Manchester United. No. He obviously knows either they're willing to sell they're desperate, or he found out they're trying to sell the club in bits and pieces, and he's trying to create public pressure to stop them from doing that. So he's Glazer out as well. He's always been Glazer out. He's said some very interesting things. He wants to invest in the club. He wants to rebuild the stadium. You know, he's criticised them in 2019 for buying players like Fred, wasting money, things like that. So he's a very blatant, outspoken, very wealthy fan. So you're kind of can see where he's coming from. So he's a very influential figure. He's very powerful. He's very wealthy and he will take the club from them, but it could take time. But we can help push them out by making the club worthless to them. And that everyone is exactly what we have to do. This has been the Movies TV Mad. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you for Friday's video. Until I see you again, goodbye. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen.